Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to start a little look at some finger style, some finger picking. There's a whole module on this coming up, but I thought as a little introduction, a little taster, we'd have a bit of a go as part of the Grade 2 Beginners course. Now, for this particular lesson, we're just going to be looking at six eight time, which is really nice as a taster for finger style because we've got this pattern where we can go thumb, one, two, three, two, one. So we're using thumb and three fingers. We don't tend to use little finger for finger style. Some people do, but it's kind of rare and a little bit more difficult. A lot easier to start off with just using the thumb and the first three fingers. There's a whole bunch of songs that work really well for this that are not too difficult. So it's a lovely pattern, and if you really enjoy the finger style, I know you're going to love the modules. One of the key things for starting finger style is realizing that the fingers generally will be assigned a particular string to play. Not all the time, but for this kind of finger picking pattern, they've got a, an assigned string. And the thumb will move around on the thicker three strings, depending on what the chord is because it wants to play the bass note. Now we're going to start off with a D chord. So for a D chord, the thumb wants to play the fourth string, which is the note D. Now the pattern that I want you to start off with is playing thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, second finger, first finger, thumb. The, the count would be rhythmically one, two, three, four, five, six, one, The first thing I want to address is whether you should be anchoring or playing free. Now with an anchor, I would mean using your little finger to rest on the actual guitar body while you pick the pattern. Thumb one, two, three, two, one. Okay, so you can see little finger is sat there anchoring for the whole time. Now I find using an anchor really, really difficult. My little finger is very short and I find that it creates a lot of tension in my hand, so I pretty much never use an anchor. But most of the guitar players that I really love that are great finger style players, like for example, I know Tommy Emmanuel, probably the greatest guitar player that's ever lived, uses an anchor when he plays finger style. So my recommendation would be to use an anchor if you can, at least start with it. When Nitsudge was learning this, he used an anchor. I'm still trying to force him to try and see if he can get going with an anchor, but it, he's having the same problem that I have with a right hander, which is that it puts too much tension in my hand. I would recommend gritting through a little bit of tension, hoping that it will come good, because I do think it's kind of better, easier in the long run if you play with an anchor. But most of the time you're going to see me playing free. So just my hand is, rest, you know, the nearest point of contact is my elbow or my forearm on the guitar. It does make it, particularly if I'm moving around, it makes it a little bit difficult. I sometimes will try and rest my whole forearm kind of on the guitar, but there's only certain songs and certain stylistic things I can do that for. So my recommendation would be to get that anchor finger down, using your little finger actually resting on the body of the guitar. Now, the next question I always get is fingernails. Do you need fingernails? Now, I used fake fingernails, like stick on acrylic nails for 20 years. Uh, I started doing it when I was studying classical guitar where the nail thing is really super important to do with the tone. Um, I ended up taking my nails off when I had my daughter just because that was sort of sharp and I kind of poked it with it a couple of times and it was like, no, this is not worth it. So I took it off and have been relearning without nails. And actually, I think for the most part, I like playing without nails now. I like the sound of it. It's a little bit warmer. Um, one thing I'm finding a bit tricky at the moment is because I'm doing the left-handed practice with Nitsudge, I've got calluses on this hand in the wrong places. So when I'm trying to pick the string, sometimes they're kind of grabbing in a funny way, which I'm still kind of freaking me out. And I'm looking forward to not having to do the left-handed practice to be able to get my finger style back. Because I love finger style guitar and it, I'm finding it quite, that aspect uh, a little bit challenging. But uh, so I, I would recommend that you either have nails or you don't have nails, but a combination won't work very well. Like if you've got one long fingernail, that one note will always be brighter and sharper than the rest, and that will sound wonky. So you either want to cut all your nails nice and short or leave them all long. If you do keep them all long so they're making contact, you will need to get the nail file out to make sure they're very smooth and not catching because it only takes a small little nook in the nail for it to catch on the string and it'll have your nail off. Most unpleasant. So the first stage is actually just being able to play the pattern. 
just nice and slowly working on thumb one two three two one I'm talking the finger now finger numbers thumb one two three two one now the first thing that you want to be trying to do when you're doing this is feeling the strings under your finger and trying to find the right position where it feels like a a nice contact with the string and it's not getting caught it's not doing this sort of thing you want to be thinking nice and smooth contact with the strings a really common beginner mistake that I see all the time is grabbing at the strings and trying to pull them there so you often see this sort of where there's a whole heap of movement of the hand the hand the actual the knuckles of your the hand doing the finger picking should hardly be moving there's a little bit of movement there, but it's not like this. You're not using your hand and arm to pick the strings. By using just your fingers there, you'll get a lot nicer contact with the string. You'll start to feel, it's worth doing this sort of thing as well, just putting the fingers on the strings, one, two, and three, and the thumb. And then just feeling, so you can't leave first finger down while you, well you kind of can, but just, Trying to feel it, trying to get, like you can, I can hit that callus, there's a callus on that finger which keeps on there, it's hooking, so annoying. So just really trying to feel, trying to make a nice contact. Oh, that third finger's really winding me up. That's a bit better, I've just angled the, you see I'm slightly changing the angle here. If I go, if I go straight on like this, that tends to get a gravy as well. It is a, a little bit of an angle this way. So I'm kind of, my fingers are pointing a little bit toward the front there. It's not just that they're, uh, they're not pointing straight down like this. There's definitely some angle there. As well, you want your first finger picking there behind the thumb. Okay, so it doesn't want to be too like, the, well, it can't be that way, otherwise you'd be picking up. But if the further you go around this way, the thumb has to come forward. You got to, everyone, again, with this kind of, technique everyone's a little different the shapes of our hands are a little different so it's okay for it to be a little different you have to find where it feels comfortable for you and you get a nice sound and the getting the nice sound is really the key thing here you want to be thinking about the way your fingers are touching the strings and how it's how how it feels and how it sounds they'll probably be together where it feels nice under the fingers where it feels smooth and relaxed that's where the sound will be the nicest and a lot of that is just practice and experimenting. So by doing it over and over again, I think, you know, literally just sitting there practicing doing this. It's a fantastic exercise for finger style. Just on the one chord, we're not even changing chords, we're not trying to do anything fancy. Just really concentrating on the tone of the notes. Trying to get the tone even and the rhythm even. Now, there are times where you might want to do a kind of an interesting rhythm. You might go. Something like that. But for practice, you want to be thinking of this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, it does make a difference as well where you pick. If I go back here. It feels very different feels different on the fingers it feels a lot harsher <laughs> it's actually it feels really hard for me to do it right up there but you can hear it's a lot rounder I always feel like this like just at the back of the sound hole is the right place here if you right over the sound hole particularly on acoustic guitar you kind of end up muffling some of the sound that should be projected out of the sound hole but so slightly at the back of it but not too far back you can experiment with those things. So we've got the touch, super important. How you're touching the note, whether you're using an anchor, trying to find that nice balance where you're not playing too hard, not playing too soft, enough to get the notes sounding really sweet, but not grabbing at them, potentially using the anchor finger or not, it's something you should experiment with. We've got the tone, like where we're playing up and down there. The touch will influence the tone for sure, but you want to experiment a little bit with that. And the time, getting that time really nice. So you've got that nice do, ba, ba, ta, ba, ba, do, da, 
ga da 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 and really trying to feel that as a nice even rhythm is also going to lift your game considerably. So I mentioned earlier as well the importance of the bass note and the thumb playing the bass note. So for any D type chord, so D and D minor, you're going to be playing D, the open D string. And for D minor 7 and D7 sus4 and any other D type chord, your thumb want to be playing the fourth string. For a C chord, the note C is found there on the fifth string. Same with A minor. That's also on the fifth string. We have a G chord where the bass note is now on the thicker string, but note the first, the second, and third things are staying on the thinnest three strings. Same with E and E minor. That's got the thicker string as the bass note. Okay, so G type chords, bass note on the thicker string, same with E. A type chords, both A major and A minor. A minor, mind ya, what's that? <laughs> a major and A minor, fifth string. C chord has the fifth string, and the D type chords, D shaped chords, will have the bass note played on the fourth string. Now, the first step is just going to be able to play it on one of those chords. And I don't recommend trying to change chords at the beginning. Just be happy sticking on the one chord because what you're going to find is when you start to change chords that it gets a little bit lumpy. So you'll go D and then you'll go to G and you'll have to reform the chord. And it gets pretty difficult. As you progress at this, you'll find that sometimes you can put your fingers down in an order that makes sense for the finger picking pattern. Like for a G chord, you want to put that bass note down first. So if you go from the D, when I go to the G, I can get the bass note. Now little finger goes down. Oh, little finger's just going down as I need it. It's not recommended, but that might help you. Because the difficulty with most of the finger style stuff, once you can do the pattern, is keeping the pattern consistent while the chords change. That becomes the thing that is most difficult most of the time when you're a beginner. It's not actually just playing the changes. There are loads and loads of great beginner finger style songs in 6-8. I think that the, the best one by quite some way for me is Everybody Hurts. Even if the bridge has got some bar chords in it, which you will be able to substitute for power chords in the next lesson. So that might not be a, a bad song to be able to do, knowing that you're just not going to be playing the bridge yet. Um, that's a nice one because the, the tempo is pretty slow. It's just using D and G mainly, a little bit of E minor and A. It is exactly this pattern that we've just talked about in 6-8. If that's not to your taste, House of the Rising Sun is quite a nice one. That involves the mini F, which of course is a bit challenging when you're playing fingerstyle. All of the notes have to be picked out clearly. And if you've got your mini F and you've got any dead notes, it's going to become very obvious. Uh, it's usually played a bit more up-tempo as well. So like if you're using my uh, beginner song course app, then you're probably going to want to slow the tempo down a little bit or play it without any sort of backing track. So just keep it nice and slow. But that's a good one as well. Uh, Hallelujah, the uh, Leonard Cohen, Jeff Buckley, uh, Rufus Wainwright, covered by loads of people. Uh, song is also a beautiful one in fingerstyle, but again, that's using an F chord as well. So. A little bit, it's, it depends on what challenges you seek and how much you're going to enjoy doing this. I I think it's a fantastic and really fun thing to check out finger style on acoustic guitar, but it also works on electric. There are a couple of like, you know, relatively no, unknown guitar players. Uh, one's called Mark Knopfler and the other one's called Jeff Beck, who both play electric guitar finger style. I don't think it'll really catch on. I don't, you know, I'm not really sure whether they'll make it as guitar players because, you know, playing finger style on an electric guitar just doesn't work, does it? You know, of course it works on electric guitar as well, you know? So there are great examples of, of people playing finger style on electric guitar. The particular pattern that I'm showing you now is kind of more of an acoustic-y styled thing, I suppose, but there are definitely examples of electric guitar being played finger style that are absolutely as good as it gets stuff. So if you're an electric guitar player, don't just skip over the finger style thing and think that you should ignore it. So my recommendation is literally just stick to that one pattern. 
for the first few practice sessions, just work on one chord at a time, really concentrate on how your fingers are feeling as they're connecting with the string, how, it fit, how the tone is, how your timing is, trying to keep it consistent. When you feel okay with that, maybe start incorporate, trying to play a song, maybe just one chord change like everybody hurts going D to G. Experiment with that for a little bit. If you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you can start trying to play a whole song or start to incorporate other chord changes, but you're much better off building this kind of exercise slowly and getting it each step of the way nice and solid rather than just trying to jump straight into playing House of the Rising Sun with all of those chord changes and messing up the rhythm of it all the time. And you know, it, it becomes a lot more difficult. And I, I don't think it's as much fun. You're much better off keeping it one step at a time and building a nice solid foundation. Really appreciate your support and let me know how it is that you're getting on with these exercises. If you're over on the website, let me know in the comments. I'll be trying to respond to them and help anyone out who's having a bit of a struggle. If you happen to be over on YouTube, you probably want to go and check out the website. There'll be a link in the description. But before you do that, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe and like button. It really does make a big difference. Hope you're enjoying all of this and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.